what's up y'all i started this what's up y'all earlier and then i was in a noisy airport and couldn't gather myself there are a couple of things i want to say in this the first is hey i'm in the united states i'll be in the united states for a little while longer um you know at least a month so um and i want to be invited to things <laughs> i'm ready to play so um if you have cool creative arts related um activist related uh dope project related activities um events um things to see and do i am open to invitations friends um if you if you know i'm not traveling to see strangers i love you all but if we never we're not friends friends like then um then I'm probably not going to get on a plane to come and visit you. But <laughs> but if you know of cool things, <laughs> cool events that we might bump into each other at, I'm down for that. Um, so, yes, please do send those along. Uh, slide in my DMs with fun invitations. Um, I'm welcoming that. All right. I want to talk about this Roe v. Wade situation quickly. Um but I think it's a it's a perspective that I think is important um, to consider. So um, I had a talk last night with um, Ijeoma Aluo in the Seattle Arts and Lectures um, at the Langston Hughes Performing Arts Center. Beautiful event. Everybody amazing. Ijeoma, love you. Um, it was just really uh, nourishing. Uh, but Ijeoma said something last night that I just thought was so important and is so very true, right? Which is that for the vast majority of people who exist in a marginalized identity, reproductive freedom has never existed, right? Like for black and brown um, women, for trans and non-binary people, for disabled folks, for indigenous folks, like reproductive freedom and reproductive rights and have always been elusive, um, whether that's the... Uh, you know, right to decide when and how and to have, um, to birth a human, um, to have safety in that process, to live through it and have the child live through it, to have the child live into adulthood, um, to have, uh, you know, autonomy over what medical industries do to your body or don't do to your body. All of those things, all of those reproductive rights have always, um, systemically eluded marginalized groups so you know so there's a way in which this system and structure is you know is rescinding a thing it never gave to us to begin with there are two things that i i think make this important the first is that this roe v wade um potential decision is by far in my mind an effort to reify white supremacist delusional power what i really feel in my gut is actually moving here is white birth rates are down significantly right um which means and and have been um Ever, ever decreasing. And while, you know, abortion will remain accessible to cis white women with money, it will absolutely remain accessible to, to those folks who have money and resource and they have private doctors and they'll be fine. The purpose is to make working class white women have to reproduce in service of white supremacist delusion. That's the goal. The goal is to get white population rates back up and to force white working class women to birth on behalf of white supremacy, on behalf of codifying white supremacy through making new white babies. I really believe that. Um, at least that's part of the equation, right? Nothing is absolute, but that certainly is, I assure you, part of the equation. Um, And I point that out because 
like I said, the the people who are the, you know the people who are are experiencing, um, you know the this decision, you know, will always disproportionately impact all the people who have always been disproportionately impacted. But what is also true is that the people who have been disproportionately impacted have always had the innovation, ingenuity, drive, fight, resilience, and resistance to figure ways around it. And now we have technology, we have far greater medical advances, we have, um, you know, digital undergrounds, we have the ability to be ungovernable in this area, to be ungovernable in the area of this experience. We have the ability to do that. Um, and I think that the most marginalized people will continue to do that, continue to be ungovernable around this. I want the working class white women to get into the way you're really being used. I want you to get into, like, I want you to get into the ploy, right? That right now you're being used, um, you know, as breeders in a white race war. Like, literally. You are being used to reify the numbers white people need to maintain white supremacist delusion. Now, I would offer, you know... That these people have all intentions on making life look exactly like the handmaid's tale absolutely <laughs> absolutely um and so if ever there were a time and if ever there were a time to get intersectional right about your perspective right that that this brief amount of privilege that you thought whiteness was going to give you white folks white patriarchal violence will capitalist violence will absolutely strip you of immediately when it needs to return to subjugation and power and right now you've been um drafted <laughs> and you didn't even know you were drafted you've been drafted to do the biological labor on behalf of white supremacist delusion so we are closer and closer and closer to a time where you're gonna have to Pick which side you are on, friend. Which side you are on. And I hope that you'll pick freedom side because um, it's the only alternative that doesn't land us in some sort of, you know, dystopian hellscape, um, which we're already dancing in anyhow. So I just wanted to say that. Um, I want to say that I don't feel hopeless in any way shape or form there is no liberty there is no liberation that i ever thought the u.s government was going to give me there is the liberation that i create in community and in solidarity with my comrades and with other you know folks visioning um you know visioning a liberatory imagination that is different than what this is and that those communities are being created every moment and that we will take care of each other because we always have, you know, and the truth is now we're going to take care of each other and we got greater, uh, greater access, greater medical advances, greater technology, um, you know, and, you know, and greater resource in many, many ways as a collective. So no, individually we would struggle, we would suffer and we would struggle. But we are not in an individual battle. We're in an interdependent battle. We're in an interdependent moment where it's going to take all of us in relationship with one another to move through this. But I believe we can. You know? And, you know, if anything, I hope that this is a moment where people continue to divest from the notion that liberation is going to be handed to you through the U.S. government. Liberation is going to be co-created in community with other people inside of a liberatory imagination. And if we can be there, then I believe we will win. All right.